Welcome back to Money in the Bank with Frank. We're still talking about employee benefits. Today we're going to talk a little bit about disability insurance and should you offer it to your employees and if you're an employee, should you take it? Should your company offer disability insurance? Well, learn the difference between workers' comp and long-term and short-term disability insurance. There is a difference. This is a staggering statistic that blew me away. According to the Social Security Administration, 25% of all 20-year-olds will become disabled and unable to work sometime before reaching the age of 67. Did you hear that? 20% of all 20-year-olds will be disabled. But unlike with medical, dental, and vision insurance, very few people know that their insurance products are designed to replace a portion of their income when they become ill or disabled and can't work. What is disability insurance? As the name suggests, it's insurance that is provided in the event that an employee is disabled and cannot work. And unlike workers' compensation, which provides benefits like partial wage replacement if you get hurt on the job, disability insurance uh, provides partial wage replacement if you become ill or disabled from work and can't work. And that's if you're away from work or if you're at work and if you're disabled and it's not covered by workers' comp, it can still be covered with a disability policy. In essence, health insurance benefits enable employees to take care of medical care, disability insurance replaces a portion of an employee income when they can't work because of an illness or a disability. And for the most part, disability insurance will not replace all of someone's income. Instead, it provides wage replacement benefits on that are going to coverage on average up to about 60% of that employee's earnings. And those payments can go up to a cap and might have a monthly cap on a payout, although that's not ideal. Receiving up to 60% of wages is still better than zero. Having that income stream can be very important to an employee and their family. Now, there are two different types of disability insurance. There's long-term disability and there's short-term disability. Short-term disability typically pays out a portion of an employee's income from nine to 52 weeks, depending on the plan. Short-term disability generally kicks in after a waiting period or an elimination period, which is usually set from seven to 14 days. If you find out that you know you misdiagnosed or something like that, you really can work, they don't wanna pay for it. So you know there is a waiting period, so don't expect that you're gonna get it immediately. And often, uh, employees will use accrued time, uh, sick time or PTO during this waiting period, and, and that's why you, know, you wanna make sure that you've got all of those different options available to you, unlike the striking rail workers who did not get that. Anyway, under certain circumstances, there will not be uh, a waiting period. The applicable plan document should provide information uh, about that waiting or elimination period. It's real important, so take a look at that. Next, you have long-term disability, and that's going to pick up where short-term disability leaves off. Long-term policies usually provide about 50 to 60% of an employee's base wage. And that's important to remember because base wage is not including bonuses, not including commissions, but whatever your base pay is. On that note, when it comes to disability insurance as a whole, you want to look at insurance companies that are really good and have good definitions based on the type of work that you do. For example, if you're a physician, you want to make sure that you have strong definitions where it comes to, you know, I can't practice medicine as a surgeon. Can you still teach? If you can teach, maybe your policy won't pay. So you need to make sure that the definitions of practicing medicine or in the case of another type of professional, if they say that you can work at Burger King, but you can't work as a doctor, we're not paying. Make sure you have a good policy with good definitions. Talk to a professional, they'll help you. There are long-term disability plans that'll pay out partial wage replacement benefits until a certain age, you know, such as 65 years old, when you know Social Security kicks in. So some private companies offer both short and long-term disability insurance plans, whereas others leave people to buy plans as an individual. Now, here's an interesting tidbit that I thought that uh, I could I could add in. If you're self-employed or a business owner, taxation can be tricky on on disability. If you have the option to take a deduction or not, it matters. If you deduct the contribution as a tax deduction and then you get disabled, those benefits are going to be taxable. If you do not take the deduction, then the benefits may pay out tax-free. Talk to your accountant. Talk to your financial advisor. They can get a little deeper into it for you. Thanks for watching here at Money in the Bank with Frank on the merge. If you have any questions or had any comments, please drop it in the uh, comment section. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.